Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum, everyone. Um, uh, this, may be my, <laughs> this may be my only comment, but uh, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I am not uh, involved with the Jewish Peace Fellowship, although I just once was, just to be clear um, about that. I'm, today, I've, I'm really speaking as chair of the Board of Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity. Um, where I do a lot of my organizing these days, and as well as Jewish Peace Fellowship, where I sit on the Rabbinic Council, and Shomer Shalom, which is a practice that perhaps relates to what we're doing. So I think a great word for um, spirituality in our tradition is Shalom, um, because it does mean wholeness and living in harmony with uh, the life around you, all, all living being. And that is, the, that is a practice, um, and both a practice and an aspiration. Um, we have a whole system of practices, which we call mitzvot, which obligate us to engage in actions that both prevent harm and also be accountable for the harm that we've caused. And then to restore equity through acts, through acts of restorative justice or reparations, which in Hebrew are called tikkun. And uh, this, this idea is related to a person's ability to access dignity, which uh, and, and to access sustainable resources. We, um, we are a very communal people, and we have a highly developed system of reparations. And at the same time, for me personally, without looking at critical race theory for myself and my, communi my community, this is sort of the third space in contemporary America that really has profoundly impacted the way all of us think about our own process of what we might call chuva or reparations. And I'm just going to share a little bit about that. Uh, not so much critical race theory, because I think I'm not the person to really speak about that as an expert. But in Jewish tradition, there's the idea that public fasting as a form of acknowledgement of harm caused public fasting, not, not so much the personal or private, but we usually beat our chest together. That is followed while we're fasting as a way of spiritually putting ourselves in some kind of empathy with the harm that we've done to breathe it in and understand it and really give witness to it. Um, there's a vidui or an enumeration of the harm that we've caused in public and collective forum. And this is not about individual salvation for us, although collective good does help all of us, but tshuva demands collective accountability and public restor restoration. And then there's this idea that we have to pursue justice, make it proactive and pursue reparations. And pursuit is a proactive endeavor that demands risk-taking, change of behavior, undergoing an internal process of awakening and healing to undergo the change that we need to be part of, to restore well-being. And of course, when faced with the same set of institutionally embedded forms of harm, we must be proactive in not repeating the harm, which means changing our way of doing business. And in, in my own community, one thing this means is that acknowledging, first of all, that 10% of Jewish people living in North America on Turtle Island are Jews of color. Jews who are Ashkenazi have a great deal to do to acknowledge the ways Jews of color are harmed within our own communities from the micro to the macro levels of aggression. Um, African American Jews are constantly, and, and non white Jews are constantly challenged by Ashkenazi Jews and others whether or not they're really Jewish. Um, white Ashkenazi institutions receive financial resources for all kinds of social justice projects, but Jews of color do not. Um, 
in the aftermath of Pittsburgh, for instance, and may their memories be a blessing, many Jewish communities started thinking about hiring more security and police. However, Ashkenazi Jews need to acknowledge how this impacts people of color within our own community and others. Jamel Robinson's tragic death is a warning about the harm embedded in militarization of police. And on a larger scale, in terms of reparations for, as I think about it as a Jewish person, the militarization of US policing has deep ties to Israeli military policies of surveillance, drones, use of tear gas, warehousing, tanks in the street, narratives that de dehumanize Palestinians. And, and for me as a Jewish person thinking about reparations here on Turtle Island, I cannot ignore the ways in which we are accountable and complicit in, provide, in, in supporting the, the institutions that harm. So as a white Jewish person, as an Ashkenazi Jewish person, we can't silo or just spiritualize these intersectional connections um, even as we all remain vigilant against anti-Semitism. So reparations for me is the perfect uh, instrument for Chuva in that it acknowledges that without the analysis and leadership of communities subject to racism, any remedy that we choose in the white community or think about to address racial discrimination will not be successful. We have to acknowledge that racism is a permanent feature of American society, not an aberration. We're not returning to some pure past. Or, uh, we, are, we are trying to work on something that has not yet been achieved. Um, so only reparations, remedies that begin with acknowledging the full impact of one ongoing harm can really work. And I feel like reparate, I feel so honored to be part of a community that's thinking about reparations and listening carefully for, for the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade and the descendants of First Peoples who were subject to, to genocide of, of colonial settler conquest. I know so much has been lost and any authentic kind of spirituality must create spaces for mourning, spaces for anger, spaces for storytelling, in ways that are healing and not re-traumatizing of people who are profoundly impacted, and spaces for active pursuit of reparations in ways that restore, um, restore our hearts and our capacity to live together, to honor our distinctions, and to envision our collective humanity and to affirm all the expressions of our humanity, the trans community, the queer community, uh, the Islamic community, Jewish community, the black and brown communities, indigenous communities, and to center those voices, especially voices who are still being so profoundly harmed in the pursuit of reparations. And I pray that um, that together, Sise uh, Puede, we will find a way. <laughs>